I went straight from that movie to another movie, an uh, independent film with James Franco. The one I had previously shot was with Christopher Walken. That's right. Okay, so I went from one to the other and um, saw Johnny in these, you know, in between. Like if I got a long weekend or, you know, I'd fly home to be with him and then fly back. It was kind of like that. Fly back from where? Where were you filming those? In New York. Okay. And where was Mr. Depp at that time? Johnny was in L.A. at the time and then eventually went on location for his movie, Black Mass, in Boston. So you were in New York and Mr. Depp was in Boston at some point? Eventually, in, in by May 2014. That's All right. it. All right. And what, if any, discussions or arguments did you have with Mr. Depp relating to James Franco in that time frame of May 2014? <sighs> It's a nightmare. Um, I w wanted to do this independent film. I liked the story. I liked the character. I you know, told him I'm not going to wear makeup in the thing. Jackson hearsay. He was mad at me for taking the job with James Franco. He hated, hated James Franco um, and was already accusing m me of kind of secretly having a thing with him in my past since we had done Pineapple Express together. Okay. So I'm going to take you to the Boston plane uh, incident. We've heard about that earlier, May 24. Can you please describe for the jury what took place on May 24 relating to the plane incident? Well, I I had spoken to Johnny. You know, he's in Boston. I'm in New York. And I spoke to him. He had already been upset with me and accused me in, um, like, many arguments about not telling him about scenes that I had, if I had a kissing scene, any sort of romantic scene, and I wasn't explicit about what I was going to do, then I was accused of having withheld information and hiding it from him. So I didn't want the fight, of course. I didn't want the argument, uh, but I had to kind of eggshell tiptoe around how to tell him when I had any sort of scene like that. And I did tell him in this occasion. Objection, hearsay. Okay, we need to stay with what Mr. Depp said, okay? Okay, so he was upset with me, um, but he didn't sound coherent so much on the phone. He was yelling at me about how could you how could you tell me this how could you tell me this when i'm filming when i have this scene that i'm doing how could you tell me this when i'm working obviously i couldn't tell him any other time because we were both filming and i told him as soon as it was relevant and but he kept saying how could you tell me this how could you just tell me this uh and it was like i had told him i was having an affair or something you know it was that angry at me but he kind of started to sound less connected to reality as these like arguments would happen on the phone. This is in one day. Eventually, he hangs up on me in the conversation, screaming, screaming at me. Um, I talked to his assistants. I won't say what they said, but I had conversations and felt encouraged that I could continue on with the plan, which was for me to get on the plane, go to Boston, pick him up, and we would go back to L.A. for his daughter's birthday. Um, I was nervous because the conversation I had had with him, and he was so upset with me on that conversation, but I figured he'd, I assumed he had passed out and that he would have been kind of sobered up the next day assuming that the work would mean that he felt pressured to, to kind of pull it together. 
and I uh, get on the plane. He sent the plane, so I assumed he's not that mad at me. He's over it. We're moving on. He's sobered up. He, I mean, I'm sitting on the plane for a very long time waiting for him, and he finally opens the door, and I see him get out of the SUV, and I can guess by how he's moving, how he's walking. I didn't realize at the time I had already been become really sensitive to these little changes um, because my life changed depending on what he was on. And he gets on the plane, and I... Um, I just knew in every cell of my body something was wrong. And he comes straight up to me, doesn't say anything to me, but is looking at me. He's got these glasses on and he takes them off in this kind of aggressive manner and sits down across from me, not in the usual spot. Uh, we'd kind of have our places on, on his plane, you know, where you get used to sitting and he I remember I got up and moved to accommodate him getting by so he could sit in the normal seat as per usual. He didn't, he sat across from me. At some point, and I don't really remember the exact sequence of it, we take off and at some point he he's asking me why, what's wrong with me, what do I have, do I have something to tell him, do I have something to tell him, you want to talk to me about your day yesterday. And then it gets... I already know that he's drunk. Um, I already know he's using, um, he reeks of weed and alcohol. I mean, his breath smelled so bad. And I could, I, I could anticipate that there was a no-win situation here. There was no me talking myself out of this or talking him down or any you know, a, a lot of my arguments and my involvement in them are, are me trying to diffuse by explaining or Objection, -explaining. non-responsive. She's telling the story, Your Honor. I, I'll sustain the objection as this part. Go ahead. Okay. So he um, is asking me questions, and I know to not engage. Uh, I was polite. I made sure to answer minimal amount of, you know, the minimal amount that I could. I moved slowly. I was trying to be polite, but not engage because there was no win. And he kept going, kept asking me. Eventually he went from, do you have something to tell me to you want to tell me how much you liked it? Tell me, did he slip a tongue? It got worse and worse, just more. It went from asking me about how my kissing scene went or how the sex scene went to asking me what James Franco had done in the scene to being really explicit about my body. You know, he was talking about my, he was saying really disgusting things about my body, about how I liked it, how I responded. And then he started talking, just straight up taunting me. I, I know you liked it. He called me a go-getter. Um, he called me a slut. In front, and also, this is happening with security and his assistants on the plane. And I remember I felt... I, I, don't, I don't... I struggle to, to be able to tell you how, how embarrassed I was because he was speaking to me in front of people in this way, asking me if I liked it and if I was wet and, you know, why I wasn't looking at him and that was proof I wasn't looking at him. That was proof that I, that I was asking for it. Did I ask James to do this and this to me? And how about if he does those things to me, ex insert sexually explicit descriptions of what he accuse me of wanting or deserving. And I, at some point in this, get up and move to the front of the plane. And I remember getting up so slowly. I didn't want to aggravate him. I didn't want to give him any excuse to pounce on. I didn't want to upset him. I didn't want him to flip a switch and get worse. I didn't want, I just remember very slow movements, and I slowly get up, 
and move to the front of the plane, and he starts throwing things at me, ice cubes, utensils. He's calling me a, um, a go-getter and then an embarrassment, talking about what an embarrassment I am. I don't know how many times I moved seats. I wish I did. I don't. I remember moving more than once, and Johnny came to me each time, not the other way around. He sits down in front of me at one point, and because I'm not answering him, I was looking out of the window, and he slaps my face. And his friend is in our proximity. And I, it didn't hurt my, it didn't hurt my face. It just felt embarrassed. Did he do that to me in front of people? It was the first time that anything like that had happened in front of somebody. I got up to move again, and he's just taunting me, having a laugh, screaming, and then just straight up mean, calling me names. And it was oscillating between those things. And I get up slowly again, and I just resolve to just sit the rest of the time up at the front of the plane. And as I get up, he kind of kicks the swivel chair into my hip, or kind of just hits me. And I look at him, and he asks me, what? What are you going to do about it? We, I just stared at him. I just stared at him and wanted him to see me. I wanted to get through to him. Didn't feel there was like, I, it felt like there was a blackness in his eyes. I wanted to look at him. I wanted him to see me. It didn't even feel like him. And as I'm walking away, slowly trying not to be, I was being very deliberate about my movements, wasn't saying anything, I wasn't engaging. I am walking away from him slowly and he tells me to hurry the fuck up. Hurry up. And I just look at him one more time, wanting to penetrate the monster to see the man that I love underneath that. The man I loved. And he tells me to hurry up again. And I pull my gaze away from him. I walk away from him. My back is turned to him, and I feel this boot in my back. He just kicked me in the back. I fell to the floor. I caught myself on the floor, and I just felt like I was looking at the floor of the plane for a, felt like a long time. And I, I, didn't, I, I thought to myself, I don't know what to do. I can't believe he just, did he just kick me? No one said anything. No one did anything. It was like you could, you could hear a pin drop on that plane. You could feel the tension, but no one did anything. And I just remember feeling so embarrassed. I felt so embarrassed that he could kick me to the ground in front of people. And uh, more embarrassing, I didn't know what to do about it. I got up and I just I walked to the front of the plane. I sat down and I just looked out of the window. And Jerry Judge security and my friend both kind of under their breath asked me, are you okay? Objection, I, hearsay. Mm. I spent the rest of the time looking out I'll of the window. I'll sustain the objection. 